number of days ago, I was inquired by a friend of mine to kind of unofficially determine or assess the class of some relics that he had inherited. Among these, he had some second-class relics and some third-class relics. Speaking to people on the church uh, about this topic, I have found that some find it wonderful, like myself, and I'm fascinated by the topic, and I also found that others find it uh, to be more of a Catholic obsession, to be weird, to be strange. So even amongst Catholics, there are mixed feelings on the practice on the topic. To answer to those that find it to be weird, to, to be strange, to be obsessive, uh, I'd like to go back to a fairly new saint in the church, a British man, John Henry Newman. Newman, as a Anglican man, also found the practice to be strange, to be weird, to be problematic, to be obsessive. And in fact, as a young Anglican man, he toured with a couple of friends, he toured Italy, and they found things to be wonderful, that were fascinating, uh, that were practices of the early church fathers, of the apostles, of the early, early church, the early Christians. And then they also found things in their, that were contrary to their Anglican theology, that were strange, that were bad, again, in their Anglican uh, assessment. Uh, some of these things were the idolatry of the Pope, the idolatry of the saints, the idolatry of Mary, and of course, the problem of relics. Mind you, this is before his conversion. A bit midlife, midlife, Newman converts to Roman Catholicism, and he kind of begins to transition. He begins to have an intellectual and theological transition to Roman Catholicism. In this transition, he begins to have clarity on how ancient some of these practices actually were. For example, the practice of relics. Relics go back to the first Christians. When Christians were being martyrized, others would come and they'd put towels on the, they'd put cloth, sorry, on uh, the blood and then they'd keep it and they'd, they'd put it in altars, they'd put it in reliquaries and they'd honor them. Fast forward a couple of decades, years, they would begin to put skulls, skeletons, uh, bodies of martyrs, of saints within altars so that they could be honored so that they could be remembered their valiant love of the Lord. So Newman began, began to have clarity on how ancient the practice was and how good the practice was. As a classic philosopher, Newman asks, asks himself the question, why? How come even amongst the early Christians, uh, relics were being kept? being stored, were being honored. And he came to the conclusion that relics were a continuation of the incarnation of Christ. This uh, central claim of Christianity that God in Christ uh, comes and he takes the fullness of humanity and that does not simply involve an intellect, a will, but it involves a body. God, through Christ, takes a body and becomes uh, incarnate. Becomes incarnate of the, Vir of the Virgin Mary and He makes His presence very, very real on earth. And this concept is found all amongst Catholicism. We go to the uh, sacraments and amongst all the sacraments, as important as the form is, the, the sacrament is invalid and does not become present without the materiality, without the matter. So, in his uh, conclusion, Newman finds that, sacri or that uh, relics continue this uh, kind of incarnational momentum. Mm -hmm.